Hey guys, so a few people are curious about how I start these kinds of things up, so we're going to talk about it real quick, and it's going to be a short video, but uh, for the most part, it starts with an idea. I just wanted some kind of control mechanism for possibly like a spacecraft or something. Uh, so once you establish kind of like the who, why, what, when, you do your prompt, figure out what it is that you're creating, who makes it, fictional company that might have created it, all this other fun stuff. Uh, usually you can write those down in like a notepad document or just jot them down in Krita and copy and paste it and put it in your mood board. Um, you can go gather references at that point. So I got like a couple drone controllers and like a wheelchair controller of all things. Um, and I'll use those and I'll start sketching. So I start sketching. This is what I come up with. Is it great artwork? No, but it's a starting point for an idea. And uh, we can roll with it from there. So you're thinking about, you know, your art fundamentals, your design fundamentals as you're setting things up, of course. And then as you're modeling it, uh, it's just cube modeling, right? It's nothing special here. So when you turn off all the booleans, you'll start to see that it's really kind of a simplistic mesh underneath all of it. And that's all you're making. I mean, it's, it wasn't even this complicated. Some of this got cut out too and extruded so that it fit better with the other piece there. But for the most part, you just start box modeling, guys. I mean, literally, that's all this comes down to usually. I create cool things by just coming up with that kind of shape design language that you want. So in my case, I want it to be more industrial, not so modern. I mean, literally, this is how it starts for me anyways. And I don't think I even did this quite right. I just rotated it, pushed that forward a little. I mean, that's the start of it, right? You might need a loop cutter too to shift things around. I might have abandoned that idea and just did that. A couple insets and hold control. See, standard modeling goes a long, long way to get a project started off. Uh, a sketch is even better because now we have something to shoot for. And that's pretty much the name of the game here for these kinds of things, right? So as you go through and you add little Boolean shapes using box cutter, hard ops, or just regular Booleans, whatever, you get things like this, right? So a little cube cut. I don't even know where that one is. It's somewhere over here, maybe. Oh, it's on the back side. It's that little piece. There's that little piece there. So you can see here, it, it didn't exist. This was actually shorter. And this little cutout was here. I didn't like those, so I didn't use them. I just went with this instead. Kind of updated some of it. Little by little, adding details. Fixing things, adding more... Um, interest in this area on the side here that's pretty much the main focus of that piece anyways right and so blocking out the other pieces same process you just do bullions guys it's not really that crazy and so you can see this one something like this this ended up getting split i split it manually but the uh the rest of it just bullying out real quick right a little blocky mesh here for like a little speaker box or something. This is just blocked in as well. It's just a little bit more complex to model something like that, I guess. But it's still cube modeling at the end of the day. And it doesn't take that long to do either. Just intersecting mesh for now. This is the jumping off point. It's just to get something modeled to see how it would work out. Because we could potentially start modeling other things that need to work with it. And we might need a character to judge our scale or our size. We can start to work it all out basically uh, with other blocky meshes. And if it's going to work, it's going to work. If it's not, it's not. If we want to change things, we can change things. Once again, change things. This was on this side. I didn't like it. So I put it on this side. Does this still make any sense? No, absolutely not. It's um, very much a rough model just to see something real quick so I can start thinking about what I need to change or refine or how I might want to do things different. So I'm going to want to create variations more than likely. So if this is going to be some kind of cockpit in a vehicle at some point, uh, you know, this looks too much like a car dash in my opinion. I might want to change something like that. So I might not use that later on, right? Might just get rid of it. I can still kind of like this idea down here. This like extra little extension to like this air vent kind of set up in here. It's so maybe some climate control or something. Uh, but yeah, this is where it all starts, guys. Like you just start playing around with shapes and forms, see what you can create, see what you can come up with, 
try to layer things together, make them more interesting. Use add-ons if you have them. Like punch, it's really good sometimes, just to be able to knock things out. Works better than the extrude manifold that comes with Blender. But you know, use box cutter. Those kinds of ideas go a long, long way. You see, keep skipping the one I want. There you go. Uh, so maybe we do something like that. That's fun. You'll be champ for that. You can start to see where it's going now, basically. So maybe in this area here, I'll put a cube. Put a cube. Change my default size real quick. Pull it up. So maybe we don't want it to look as car dash looking, maybe. So we can get rid of that kind of form anyways. Do something like that. I had a different idea that worked out different in my head, perhaps. Maybe I do a cut here instead. No wedge, so we hit uh, W. It's a little extreme, perhaps, but... Yeah, we could get away with that, maybe. Push that in there. Yeah, so we keep working our ideas out, basically. And so, when you have one solid design, like I think it's a fairly solid design. It could definitely use some refinement, though. It's like these joysticks, they don't really make much sense up here. It'd be kind of hard to access them and get to them. It might be better on this side. Uh, but yeah, once you got something kind of start with, started that you can work with, you now you can use all your tools available to you. Don't be afraid of using Booleans when you're doing game art. And this is what the channel is really about, is creating uh, game art. We're not worried about... Um, the, the techniques necessarily like what we're using we're, we're trying to find our shapes forms designs what looks cool what's interesting you know at the end of the day this is supposed to be a an end result that ends up in a game engine it's not about just doing like perfect subdivision modeling all the time and so if we can block things out and then later on you know like if we just want to do uh bake on this thing and use this as a game model and just do like a, a bevel shader bake or something on it like we could do that there's nothing that stops us from doing that we could texture it right up as is uh, it's going to be a little bit low res because of some of these bevels but you know that's where having you know additional add-ons like in our case something like a mesh machine you know you can just uh, refuse things like that and increase the count here set it to 0.55 there you go now we got that going on it doesn't even change size or nothing you know refuse increase 0.55 still right so as long as we got sharp edges on each side it usually works out well symmetrize it later if needed but higher resolution right same could happen on something like this if you've done manual bevels anyways you grab two faces refuse right 0.55 see where we're going with that so we can always refine these things later on increase their fidelity uh, if we wanted to make you know this even nicer and take it to zbrush and start doing a bunch of work over there we could definitely do that uh, it's nothing that prevents you from playing around with your mesh after the fact these block out meshes are great for turning into subdivision uh, usually they work out pretty well with increasing bevel counts so you can make mid poly models and things like that as well just use them straight as a game asset it's just really it's up to you to determine what you're going to need to do and you're still designing at the end of the day this is still a concept at this point it's not a, a game model yet it takes a little bit more rework to uh, make that happen so but like when you're designing anything, like in the case of the, um, the stick here, right? We can play around with sculpting on it even if we wanted to. And you know, just see if we can't get some ideas going using some of the sculpting tools and uh, even doing remeshes, right? Like we could retop of this perhaps if we wanted to do that. So like never think of your tools as like off limits. Like always use your tools if you can uh, and rely on them too. There's nothing wrong with that. So if we want to do a mask and invert it, use mesh filter and inflate it, maybe that works out for us. Who knows? Uh, we can start to see what that might look like with a little extension there. Who knows? And uh, maybe we go in and do this kind of stuff all over the place. Maybe we use a layer tool. Just turn the height way down, maybe. Oh, maybe not down that far. Oh, we got a mask. Let's turn that off. 
Press A, you can use the mask menu. Clear. All right. So yeah, you can use the layer tool and just go to town and have fun. Play around with ideas. You'd remodel this more than likely or retopo it one or the other. But you can definitely layer things up. Try out ideas, hold control. You can push things down. Smooth them a bit, perhaps. Use the scraper, set the scraper to plain and normal. And whenever you find something you really like and you want to just make it more flat, if you just click and drag, it will scrape. It won't go over the edges of where you're scraping, the plane anyways. Uh, but if you want to fill, you can hold control and you can fill as well. So you can flatten things out very fast that way. It's a really fun way of working. Make it smaller if you need to. And then go in and tighten things up a little. So you can create flat surfaces very easily with the... Uh, sculpting tools and if you're going to use like the smooth tool at full strength it's smooth along normals so it's going to flatten in areas like this so you can create like chamfers potentially or just little flat sections right uh, you'll see it flattens all that down make it smaller and then it will flatten if you go over an edge so just keep that in mind but it will flatten that area it's like a sander basically so the plation is smooth Want to tighten edges up you can use creases all that other fun stuff so that's getting off into uh, sculpting territory hard surface type sculpting right uh, but back here maybe i smooth it real quick and then scrape it or uh fill it right so i can flatten it all out in there great way of just coming up with quick designs it's like drawn in 3d basically which is awesome and, you know, and never take for granted uh, working in Krita either and doing 2D. And that's the reason I did that whole perspective drawing video was because I wanted you guys to really think about this. When you're sketching in perspective, you're, you're drawing in 3D is what you're doing basically, right? So if you want to come up with the idea of like little floor tiles or whatever the case, right? Little interesting things. Uh, you can go through and start sketching. Find your center points. Maybe make a, something like so. Give you extrusions. You see what I'm getting at? You do all that fun stuff like that. And uh, come up with some interesting stuff perhaps, right? Go back over that one. Cut a little section out here. Why not? All right. So now you're starting to see the potential in that drawn in 2D thing. It's almost identical to working in 3D in some respects once you understand it. So it's very similar anyways. Uh, it has limitations. Of course, every tool has limitations. You exploit them to their fullest. Don't be afraid of using them when needed. And so, yeah, don't get in that mindset that like something's off limits because um, for whatever reason you come up with, like if photo bashing works really well for concept art and photo bash, you know, like if that's something you enjoy and it works for you, do it, learn it. It's fun. Um, now if you're just kind of running into issues with like, um, not sure like what tools to use and when and where that's going to come down to workflow, how you combo things together. That's all workflow for the most part. So. You're going to want to spend some time making some actual assets, get into a game engine, test things out, see how it's going to work out for you. We could spend all day doing art passes on things and having fun with it, but ultimately the goal is to get into a game engine and have it work and function there. So like at this point, this is a good time to start testing stuff in uh, game engines as well uh, as you're coming up with those initial concepts before you do a whole lot more work on it. Uh, so just a quick block out, a detailed kind of block out if you would. And uh, it goes a long way. So you can start to see if like this is going to line up when the player is sitting in the uh, seat, uh, piloting the thing, right? Is the dashboard too far away? Is it, you know what I'm saying? Like you're gonna have to start figuring all this stuff out as well, which is, you know, a whole nother topic entirely, how to start doing that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, that's the main idea anyway. So definitely have fun with your 3D modeling projects, but don't, don't let anyone tell you that you can't use 
any tool because of you know x y or z reason i think you'll highly regret um, doing that especially to yourself if that's something that you've been doing you know like if you don't have a steady hand when you're drawing uh, 2d concepts use a line tool don't be wor don't worry about it um if you need to turn on brush smoothing turn on brush smoothing it's it's there for you to make nicer cleaner strokes right they're, they're just things to utilize and so where this goes from here is that uh, yet yeah, test it make sure it's going to work out like if i want to do like a modular environment or modular interior so that i can use different dashboards with different control panels and things i could do that possibly um, start setting up the reason or how this is going to work in the game and um, then it does the art then you do the art pass right like it does it no it does itself click button it's done no uh, you got to do the art pass later on that's when you might do high to low poly bakes uh, if you need subdivision you retop of this kind of stuff or convert it into subdivision if you're doing mid poly you might get away with just beveling a lot of stuff and uh waiting the normals like that that's a possibility as well i mean so at the end of the day it's going to be a judgment call on your half on what techniques you want to use to approach doing your game art but generally speaking there's um you know just kind of like standard modeling you can just texture it well using seamless textures trim sheets simple easy way of doing things but then there's always like bevel shader bakes there's actual um bevels that you use with like mid polys and decals and you set up trims and stuff on them and all that fun stuff but then there's high to low poly bakes as well where you want to go to zbrush first so like a lot of detailed objects are high to low bakes whereas like larger things like radio towers and uh, architectural elements they're going to be seamless textures and material blending and material air blending uh, so you got to start thinking about all that stuff later on uh, but you have to get the shapes and forms going i think which is probably half the battle creating cool stuff right interesting fun things um, and you'll get into this workflow where it becomes uh it com becomes easy basically like it becomes a lot easier to understand what you're trying to do and achieve and you'll start to find like a design language when you're doing like multiple assets as opposed to just doing one you'll start to see elements that you want to repeat across the different assets right like so it starts to create a um, kind of a design language if it's going to be more industrial or uh, have the same kind of like corporate look, branding look to it things like that uh, so yeah i mean just have fun with the guys don't overthink this stuff too much uh, you know i just i cannot emphasize this enough though if you're trying to become a game artist all right download a game engine and start working in the game engine to create environments or whatever props and throw them in the game engine make sure they work and function correctly there's all kinds of different stuff you'll have to make it's not always just going to be cool cyberpunk sci-fi type stuff um, you might be doing like uh, sculptures of uh, whatever fine art type looking sculptures that end up in an environment uh, yeah, architecture all different types and so you know you want to practice doing all kinds of different things and and study them make them look really good uh, learn the workflows right so learn your high poly to low poly baking, learn how to create mid polys and use decals and trims. And then uh, just learn when you can cut corners and when you can't cut corners and how to speed up and be more efficient and time your work too. Uh, something I haven't really talked about on the channel is that you can time how long you spend on your projects. You can go to something like clockify.me and you can go create an account over there. And every time you start working on something, create a project and then start timing it, see what it happens, see where it goes. Um, and that'll get you into the mindset of working as opposed to just freelance hobby learning how to create assets and that's critical you have to start learning how to do things efficiently effectively fast uh, to some degree you know some things take longer than others obviously uh, but you should feel there should be like a momentum to what you're doing so it can be you can kind of estimate how long something takes you to to work on and then you can compare yourself to other artists and see about how long they work on you know given specific things uh, everybody's going to be a little bit slower faster than each other usually but there's kind of a, a nice area to be in where you're not the slowest or the fastest perhaps maybe uh, and that's where you'll, you'll still find work so anyways that's it for this video hope you enjoyed check out the next one